but I did. Praise God. Because uh, when the Lord wants to speak to us, he has a way of speaking to us. Glory to God. He'll take us and let us read something. Oh, hallelujah. Now, the, the 15th chapter of Acts is talking about the Jews were unhappy with the Gentiles because they wanted them to get uh, circumcised under the old law. But Paul began to tell them, glory to God, it's the Lord has received them. He gave them the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm just hitting the high points here. But I want to read the 14th through the 17th verse because this is what caught my eye. Simon had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take them out of them a people for his name and to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. He began to quote scripture from the old Bible. After this I will return and I will build again the tabernacle of David which is fallen down and I will build again the ruins thereof and I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called saith the Lord who doeth all these things. And what caught my eye was that the Lord said he would set up again the tabernacle of David. And I began to think, well, why didn't he say Solomon? Or why didn't he say, uh, glory to God, one of the other uh, great men of God that built a great tabernacle? Because David didn't build a tabernacle. He had a tent. Oh, glory to God. And I began to get excited about this. Hallelujah. And as we go through this fast uh, oh, praise God. You know, it, it's not what is on the outside. Uh, praise God. It's not the circumcision of the outside body parts, but it's the circumcision of our heart. And I begin to think about David and why, glory to God, uh, you know, uh, he could have, Moses uh, constructed a tabernacle and, and Solomon built a beautiful Ephesus. Glory to God. But David had a tent. But David had something else. Praise God. Glory to God. I want to tell you, oh, glory to God, that uh, when we are after God's heart, oh, glory to God, our little tent will suffice. Praise God. The Lord gets more glory out of our praises than anything we could construct. Uh, glory to God. Any, he wants this as his dwelling place. Praise God. And I realized that in the Old Testament, they had the, the Ark of the Covenant and it had to be housed. Glory to God. And when Moses, when God gave Moses the instructions, he, he told him to uh, build the, how to build it and put it into the Holy of Holies and nobody could go in but the priest. Oh, praise God. But then we, we see what happened. Oh, glory to God. And the tap and the ark was moved. Oh, praise God. I'm getting ahead of myself. But oh, hallelujah. I got excited today because uh, I want my heart to be circumcised. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I, have, I feel like that David's tabernacle was God's favorite place. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, Acts 13 and 22 says, And when he had removed Saul, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. David had to wait, though. Some of us are not good at waiting. Some of us are not good at uh, seeking after the Lord and, and waiting on the Lord to move. 
in his time, he'll move for us. He'll make all things. Oh, glory to God. And Father, I thank you tonight for this word. Let me be able to bring it out, Father God, like you inspired me today with it. Oh, God, I praise you right now. Oh, God, hide me behind the cross, Father God. Mold me, make me. Lord, I give you my heart, Father God. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, glory to God. I believe that the most powerful uh, component of David's tabernacle happened a long time ago. It started a long time ago when he was a little shepherd boy out in the field, hallelujah, dancing before the Lord. Woo! Worshiping God. Hallelujah. I find if you don't worship God when you're a nobody, you won't worship him when you think you're a somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, God, I give you glory. I thank you, Father. David out on the backside of the desert, just him and those sheep, but he had a companion. Praise God. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Father. Uh, David had an unusual hunger always pursuing God's presence, chasing after the heart of God. Glory to God. He had a passion for the presence of God. Do we have, uh, really, do we ask yourself, do I really have a passion for the presence of God? Now, I know we all get tired sometimes. We all, uh, oh, it's, it's a rough way sometimes. And we all get tired. But we need to keep the passion for the presence of God alive in us. If we have to get up, run around our room a few times, praise God, get a song on our heart, start worshiping the Lord, it works. Hallelujah. Glory to God, the Lord uses song to really stir me up and get me going. Hallelujah. And before I know it, I find myself pray in the midst of beautiful praise. Glory to God. And you see, worship of the Lord draws him to you. Oh, glory to God. Yes, prayer. But I tell you what, the, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Start praising him and see, won't he come and see about you? Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. David began talking about bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. He wasn't interested in that gold-covered box. Hallelujah. But he was interested in the anointing that rested a around that box. I believe the scripture talks about an outstretched wings of a cherubim on the top of the ark. The Shekinah presence of God. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Moses' temple and Solomon's temple, the ark was behind the veil. Ooh, hallelujah. But David, praise God, he had the ark out there. He began to think about bringing the ark back to Jerusalem. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. But the only thing, uh, praise God, that was around the ark of the covenant when David had it was the worship that went on. I want you to know that he ordered nonstop uh, worship. 24 hours a day, seven days a week for nearly 36 years. Praise God. Glory to God. In David's tabernacle, the glory was seen by everyone. You see, in the, behind the Holy of Holies, only the priests went in. They, nobody else got to see it. Oh, hallelujah. But when David had the tabernacle, praise God, everybody around could see the glory of God because everybody was worshiping. Everybody was singing. Oh, hallelujah. He had a chain fast going on. Praise God. Glory to God 24-7. Praise God. Oh, glory to God. Whew. Perhaps, oh, hallelujah, was one of these times when David coined Psalm 134, 1 through 3. He said, behold, bless you the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord, the Lord that made heaven and earth. Bless ye out of Zion. Glory to God. You can put the King James Version up. I really don't know what version I Googled there. Praise God. I just read it and if I liked it, I pulled it in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, a tent became 
the dwelling place and the resting place of the Ark, uh, uh, the Ark of Covenant. Praise God. But it was much more than that. It was the worship the, the praise, uh, David's desire for God's presence. Praise God. And I, I thought about some notes. I scribbled down here. The presence of God costs something. We got to do it God's way. And aren't you thankful for a second chance? Glory to God. I began to think about that because I went to 2 Samuel, the sixth chapter. I began to think about the Ark of the Covenant and how that David had to get it, had two tries to get the Ark of the Covenant because the first time he didn't do it the way the Lord instructed. How many know that you cannot bypass God's instructions and have a good outcome? Glory to God. We'll read a little bit in 2 Samuel uh, ver, uh, chapter 6. Again, and I'm sorry, I don't know which version this is, but just put the King James up. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from ballet of Judah to bring up thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Giabed and Uzzah, Uzzah and Ahio. The sons of Abinadab drove the new cart and they brought it out of the house of Abinadab which was at Gilead accompanying the ark of God and ugh, say that for me. Thank you. The more I look at it, the more tangled up my tongue gets. Praise God. Went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all matter of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and palsies and on timbrels and on cornets and on cymbals. Man, they had a band going on. They were worshiping the Lord. They had a, ba a percussion band going on. Praise God as they danced before the ark. Hallelujah. But they lack something. They lack something. Go on, let's read it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzziah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it for the oxen shook it. Mm. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzziah, and God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzziah. And he called the name of the place Perzuaziah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day. We need to get the fear of God back in our, back in here. We need the fear of God. And said, how shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David. But David carried it aside to the house of Obed, Obed thank you, the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of obed and the Giite, three months, and the Lord blessed Obadiah and all his household. See, so just having the Lord around you will bless you. But to have the Ark of the Covenant sitting at your house, whoo, can I tell you, we still got the Ark of the Covenant right here. God will bless your house if you invite him in. Praise God if you worship him, if you bring him in the house with you every day. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. We, in this day and time, I look out and I see that man is trying to make God accept everything except what he will accept. Uh, Cain and Abel, I'm going to give you the offering I want to give you. It doesn't matter what you say. But you see, God doesn't accept it. 
And somehow, in our mixed up mind, we think God's going to accept it anyway. Praise God. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. Glory to God. I believe, ha, huh, praise God, that we got to do something. And you're going to be sweating a little bit. Praise God. Uh, hallelujah. You know, I never used to sweat in the house of God because I didn't do anything. I sweated back there, sweated whether my books were going to come out right, sweated with. But I'm talking about in the house of God because I was too shy to shout. I couldn't, my feet felt like they had lead in them. I couldn't move them. Praise God. And when someone would say, let's all leap for joy, I could do that. Praise God. But I want to tell you something. God will fix it. If you desire, ha, huh, praise God. If you desire, I desired to let the Lord use me. I desired to shout, praise God. Well, y'all know the end of that story. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. God won't accept our way. It takes his way. And that's what he told me to preach, his way. I can't tell you that sin is not sin. And I still have the mandate that God gave me almost 10 years ago. I can't believe it. When I walked in this pulpit, he said, teach my work people to trust me. Church, if we go out of here not trusting him, we won't make it. Because perilous times, as the scriptures tells us, are coming upon. We think we've seen perilous times, but we're going to come to a time when we've got to have trust in God. Because man's system is going to fail us uh, every time. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. You see, David forgot. I don't know if he forgot or if he just wasn't thinking. But he didn't remember that the ark was to be transported only on the shoulders of sanctified Levites. Only on the priest of that certain, hallelujah, tribe of Jewish people, the Levites. They were anointed to carry the ark. Let's skip on down to 2 Samuel, praise God, the 6th chapter and 12 through 17. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of obed and all that pertaineth unto him, because the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of obed unto the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they bear the ark of the Lord, had when, excuse me, let me go back, that when they, they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen. They walked 15 miles and they stopped. Glory to God. Every six paces and they sacrificed an oxen. I bet they were sweating by the time they got back to Jerusalem. Walk six paces. I meant to look that up to see exactly how many feet that is. They would stop and make a sacrifice unto the God, unto the Lord. David was stirred up. Praise God. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the shout of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. Many people will despise you for obeying God. Many people won't like it because you make a right decision and they don't. I've had this happen to me even, I, I love my sister dearly, but many times she would be mad at me and call me Miss Goody Two Shoes because I, I wanted to do right. I had the love of God in my heart at an early age. Glory to God. 
praise God. His wife despised him because he loved the Lord so much. And he didn't care who saw him praising God. And they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. Woo. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Glory to God. David wanted the blessings that had been poured out on everywhere that the ark had rested. Glory to God. Obed-Edom's house had been blessed. Glory to God. But I want to tell you, hallelujah, the oxen is a sign of strength. But I want to tell you something today. Glory to God. That the weakness of man, the weakness of man is where God wants to dwell. Oh, the weakness of man. Oh, hallelujah. He said, when you're weak, I'll make you strong. Glory to God. The weakness of man is going to carry the ark of the covenant of God until Jesus returns uh, because he's living and dwelling on the inside of us. Uh, oh, hallelujah. We got to realize that nothing we can do physically, but when we spiritually discern Christ's body, oh, hallelujah, and we invite him to live on the inside of us, Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. They carried that ark almost 15 miles. Praise God. Church, it's going to take a little sweating. It's going to take a little pouring out for the Lord. Hallelujah. They stopped every six paces and made a sacrifice. Oh, hallelujah. Are we sacrificing unto the Lord like we need to? I, I, I thank God for this fast. Oh, praise God, because I don't know about you, but I want to transport God's glory in me. And that's our job. We're to transport God's glory. Hallelujah. After the Lord came and gave us this new covenant, when he said he would send us the Holy Ghost to live on the inside of us, uh, we have the Shekinah glory living on the inside of us. Uh, but many of us don't utilize it. We don't cultivate it. We don't pray, pray it through. We don't fast like we should. And I'm including myself in the last year and a half. I have not uh, fasted partly because of physical, but I'm telling you, I'm starting this year off with a new fast, a new determination to carry the Shekinah glory in my body like I never have before. Glory to God. I, I'm just not going to sit down and give the devil my praise anymore. Glory to God. David was passionate about the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. And I saw where uh, uh, in the a note that I read. It said, when we don't value dignity like Michael did over deity, are we valuing our dignity over the deity of Christ? Not being willing to, willing to move out and do the things, even to testify or to talk to someone. And I'm the first one to tell you it's not that easy. But when you feel the unction of the Lord, I never will forget it. I've asked God to forgive me for this many times because I uh, approached, a man approached me in Walmart and I know he was going to ask me for money. But when he looked at me, he couldn't even ask me for any money. He just said, never mind. But I, I, I wished a million times that I had taken that opportunity. I missed one. I missed an opportunity because after I started to go turn around and go try to find him because as I was walking away from him, the oh, Lord have mercy. The Lord was speaking to me, but I couldn't find him. Oh, hallelujah. See, don't miss that opportunity. Oh, it, I shudder to think about it. But we're human and we're going to make mistakes. But all we can ask God to do is help us make up for it. Uh, glory to God. Send us somebody else, Lord, that we will be able to minister to. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This same man said, you can't keep your dignity. and I mean, you can't seek his deity and maintain your dignity. And that's true. Sometimes we just got to let it all hang out. Praise God.
We let it all hang out when we're cheering for a, base, uh, a baseball or a football game. Lord, have mercy. Lord, don't we holler and jump up and down and scream. Don't let your praise for God be less than for a football game or something else that you're excited about. Glory to God. Are we willing to pay the price for God's presence? I had that thought on my mind as Elder Faye made the statement and as I walked out of my bedroom, I said, God, I want your glory, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, we want to move Faith Temple forward. Glory to God. And it takes all of us. See, I can fast and pray till my skin falls off my bones. But if I don't have you all with me, I can't make any progress. It takes all of us together to progress this church forward. You can't do it by yourself and I can't do it by myself. We need each other. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I began to think about, because the Lord impresses this in my spirit very many times. Matthew 18 and 20 says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Ezekiel 22 and 30 is a scripture that, I, that, that sticks with me because the Lord reminds me often, we don't pray enough. We got to stand in the gap. We got to st make up a hedge. Oh, glory to God. Ezekiel 22 and 30 says that I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Is the Lord finding someone today to pray for that sinner? that has no one praying for them. And believe you me, I know families that there's no one praying. No one's praying. We got to pray, church. We've got to pray. Many times when I run out of my English words, I yield over to the Holy Spirit and I ask the Lord to use my prayer to stand in the gap. Let me meet that one that I can talk to. Glory to God. Psalm 84 and 10 says this. I like that song that's made after this scripture. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. You know, David was a king, but he made a statement, I'd rather be a doorkeeper because he realized the awesomeness of God's present presence in his life. He sought after the presence of God. Oh, glory to God. So today, I want to seek after God like I've never sought after him before. And it goes on in, in 1 Chronicles, the 15th uh, chapter and the 24th verse, and it says, Obed, say that for me. Thank you. It just won't ring out. And Janiah were doorkeepers for the ark. They were doorkeepers for the ark of the covenant. Praise God. Glory to God. Are we excited? David was so excited when he brought that ark back into Jerusalem. Glory to God. He danced like a madman. He was excited. He was happy about the presence of God dwelling among them again. Hallelujah. You see, somebody else can get your blessing if you're not praising him like you need to. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm claiming mine tonight. I'm claiming mine. Let's all stand to our feet. Come on up, Brother Lowe. Make final announcements. And don't forget to be here Sunday morning. Call somebody. Oh, praise God, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to be another year old. Two years ago, I didn't know if I would be. I didn't know what God's plan for me was. But I thank him. I'm excited to stand up here. <laughs> praise God for another year. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
If you can come out on Friday night, come out to the prayer meeting. Come out to Tuesday morning, all you that don't work. You need to be here praying on Tuesday morning. Glory.